And good evening, everyone, for the finale of the Spring 2021, the 10 Day Blood Sugar Challenge. So I know that everybody's worked really hard. We have a, a lot of people that are doing the 10 Day Blood Sugar. It's a great time to do it, clean up after Easter and get ready for the summer. So congratulations. It looks like you made it. Uh, you know, 10 days is not that hard. That's why I like to encourage a 21 day. You know, if so, but 10 days is a good, great start. And it's a good just kind of mid, mid year cleanup because, uh, you know, we all have a tendency to fall off the wagon. So it's always a good time to kind of get back on this on the wagon without being too far off. If you wait till next January, then uh, I just have found that this works better to kind of do uh, quarterly little tune ups. All right. So this is the why behind decreasing the sugar. Uh, remember, we'll do questions at the end. If you have any in, uh, questions, you can type them in the chat and we'll cover those at the end. So we're going to talk about the why behind sugar just briefly because we've really covered sugar in the very beginning. Um, I have a couple other things I really want to talk to you about tonight. Uh, kind of my why, the why I eat well and everything. So when we talk about sugar, <clears throat> remember it's an addict, it's, it's as addictive as cocaine. Uh, so being addicted to sugar is, is uh, and flour, no difference, is uh, the biological disorder driven by hormones and neurotransmitters. So it's a perpetual addiction. You know, you eat sugar, you like it, you crave it, and it has those addictive properties and it spikes your blood sugar, your dopamine's released, the brain then becomes addicted to that release of dopamine. Then the mass insulin is secreted to manage all that blood sugar to drop it back down to normal. Then the blood sugar levels fall rapidly and then your insulin levels go high and then all of a sudden you have a immediate fat storage and then your body says, oh, wait a minute, I don't have my sugar high, I want more. And then the hunger and cravings start and blah, blah, blah. And we keep going around and around. So that's why we try to decrease the sugar because it's really carbohydrates like we talked about on Monday. We don't need carbohydrates. We need proteins and we need fats. And if we don't have enough carbohydrates, our, our liver can make them via ketones for the brain. That's just a new concept. And remember, if you didn't lose weight, I, I always say that we have non-scale victories. You know, your clothes fit better, you have more energy, your improved endurance, uh, you sleep quality, fewer cravings, and you just feel better. I mean, for me, I always, uh, it, it's, it's just, it's just a nice cleanup because we don't, you know, have any wine and we cut out all our cheese. So those are the, probably the two main things that we have to cut out. Everything else we eat pretty normally, but it lets me know that, you know, I, I we've already talked about kind of keeping our cheese intake down because it doesn't really make me feel good. And also keeping the wine down. That's, that's always a, a benefit. <clears throat> so the scale measures all of your body weight, not just your fat. Remember, it's just a number and it doesn't tell us, you know, it doesn't tell you what a great person you are. Because we know that you're kind, smart and funny and that you have the power to choose your happiness. And it does, you know, it, it doesn't measure just your fat. So just know that uh, it's not a, it's not the mandatory part of this program, but you are welcome to come to Eustace for the Truth Slayer because it's waiting for you. So remember, if you haven't been on that and if you've done the 10-day program, if you actually did the 10-day program, you are welcome to come up to Eustace at no cost to get on the scale and really see where you are. Uh, it's a great tool. And the reason why I have this particular one, the 570, is that it measures visceral fat, which we have a lot of people that are what we call tofies, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. And they don't realize how much um, adipose tissue they carry around their midsection, which is, is, you know, that's heart attack weight. So when we look at that, we look at being able to measure your bone mass, your uh, water weight for your muscle, your ligaments, your tendons, your blood, your lymph, your organs. And then we get your, have to add the fluffy stuff in to get your total body fat. But it puts it out on a nice printout. It ports it to your phone. So you always have it. Uh, my patients that are my virtual patients, I have them go to a facility that has one of these and it ports it to them and then they just share that with me. So it tells us where your muscle is. So the next time you come in after you've done some weight loss or some weight management or some exercise, we can see exactly where you put your muscle on and exactly where you lose your fat. And that's a key thing because sometimes if you, you've worked out really hard and maybe you only lost a couple pounds, I can show you that, hey, well, you put on two pounds of muscle, but you lost five pounds of fat. So remember, muscle and fat are two different entities. And you hear the saying of uh, what weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of fat, I mean, a pound of bricks. 
Well, they weigh the same, but it takes a lot of feathers to make a pound. Same thing with fat. It takes a lot of fat to make a pound and very few bricks to make a pound. So that's where that measurement comes in really um, key for you. And especially for my patients that have our, our challenged losers. So uh, please, I encourage you, um, if you didn't do the program, if you didn't do the 10-day program, uh, we charge you know, 45 because I sit down and go through it all with you to get on the scale. It's a $10,000 scale. So um, it's, you know, like I said, it's the Mac Daddy. We only have one in, in Winter Park because it's up on off the ground uh, on blocks. Uh, it shakes too much. So I have to have it on a, a secure standing ground like a cement. So that's why it's in Eustace. And plus it's $10,000, so I don't have two. Uh, so if you didn't watch the documentary, I'm not going to talk a lot about that this time um, because I know some of you have already watched it. But if you didn't watch it, I encourage you to watch the documentary for a good refresher. Also watch it with your family. If you have kids or, uh, or spouses that are not as um, don't make the, the best choices like you do, then it's a really good uh, film to see. It's on YouTube. I sent the link out last time. If anybody needs a link, just let us know. I'll send the recording of this tomorrow or maybe tonight, and then you can just uh, request the, the link for the Fed Up. It's on YouTube. So live long and prosper. Almost everyone wants to live a long life, but nobody actually wants to get old. So that's what I wanted to talk about tonight longevity. So I'm not a big, I'm not a big, um, I don't like the mindset of anti-aging because I, we're all going to age and we don't want to look like we did when we're 20 with a decrepit body, but we want to age gracefully and we want to he age healthily. So there's some keys to longevity, um, good genes, you know, you, you were either born with them or not, a good gut bacteria, good mitochondria, moderate exercise, calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, and a ketogenic type diet. Those are some really good keys. All the research I do when I teach doctors, it boils down to these things. I'm not going to go into the, the deep, dark depth of this tonight because it, it would take too long, uh, but I'm going to start just kind of adding some of this in because as I age, it's fascinating to me to watch the people around me that are aging and how they age, like the athletes I ride with uh, it's amazing. I've got we've got 70 year olds that are riding with us that are they're just phenomenal. And, you know, they, then we have, you know, 40 and 50 year olds that can't keep up with the 70 year olds. Uh, so that's, you know, it's, it always fascinates me. And I think that we have the ability to age better. And so what I see is that we we live to 65 and retire or 55 and retire in poor health. And then they then people spend the next 20 years in chronic disease. They can't move. Their blood pressure is high. They're obese. Uh, they're diabetic. You know they can't have quality of life. And and to me that's what longevity means that you can have uh, a longer living life and be a uh, uh, you know go do things. You know give back to you know to nature. Give back to the the world. You know exercise. Give back to your family and be just a, the best human you can be. And do that for as long as you can and then die. And then you should, you know, just not wake up one morning. And I think that would be better than having a long, miserable death, which is what I see a lot of. So that's kind of what the, my thought of is of uh, longevity. So when we look at the definition, it's the period of time an organism is expected to live under ideal circumstances. We're the ones in charge of most of those circumstances, you know, barring having, uh, you know, an accident or something like that, you know, and genes that maybe, you know, cause something or some exposure when you were younger, we, we, there's some things we can't help, but we can do a lot to kind of maintain our bodies. So that's, and in chiropractic, to me, that's the whole, the beauty of our profession is that we want to keep you working and, and moving. And, you know, other professions are looking at your symptom and just giving you a pill for that symptom, but there's still stuff going on and the symptom doesn't stop the problem. So to me, this is more of a, a global problematic approach. So when we look at the st st statistics, it's, you know, it's always so fascinating to me. It's like, how is it that the United States spends the most money on health care, yet we have the lowest life expectancy? We should live to 150 years old. But uh, we, you know, specifically, we lived at about 79 years, and we're 31st in the world of uh, longevity. So we're doing something very wrong, and we're spending our money uh, uh, very, very wrongly. And I think that's where it goes into that we are um, doing 
uh, you know, medicines where the pharmaceutical companies are making tons and tons of money, but it's not getting us better. It's stopping the symptom, but our bodies are still getting worse and worse and worse. So uh, I want you to really kind of, you know, take a, a bite of that. It's really fascinating to me that we have that, that whole concept. So how long can we potentially live? Well, the oldest living woman recorded was uh, 122.45 years. That was Jeanne Calme. She, she set the maximum lifespan. So she set the precedence for all of us. And that was, she, she was born in 1897. So she just did a lot. So I'm sorry, she died in 1897. So we have the propensity to live that, you know, but there's also a lot of uh, ethical questions we think about. Well, if we live that long, how is the planet going to help all, you know, take care of all of us? But to me, if we live that long, we also will be able to give back. We can grow our own food. There's a lot of different potentials that we can, we can look at. And not everybody's going to want to live long or not everybody's going to take care of their body well enough to live long. But if you work so hard to retire and then you live the rest of your 20 years spending your money on going to doctor's appointments and taking medication because you can't take a vacation because you can't get out of your chair, what, what, what good is it? So it's about quality of life. So there's a, there's a 116 year old Japanese woman. She's crowned the oldest, the world's oldest person by the Guinness Book of World Records. So look at what she does. She wakes up at six in the morning each day. She studies. So she's reading math and other subjects for fun. And she competes in a game Othello, which is a popular game in Japan. I've never played it. So what did our ancestors do right? They grew their own food. They cooked with whole foods. They rarely snacked. They engaged in physical labor. They went to bed early. They got up early. They ate a traditional diet. They led a simple life. And they didn't have electronics. I mean, you go to a restaurant now and it, I mean, Marianne and I won't take our phones in. We may take one phone in, but it's turned upside down, you know, the ringers off just so it's not sitting in the car. But, you know, there'll be a family of five sitting at a table and each one of them have their phone and their head buried. Why, why even go out, you know, just eat at home and sit on your phone. So what causes aging? So when we talk about aging, we talk about, the, we have something called telomeres and those are the uh, they're attached to the chromosomes and we lose those telomeres over time and they shorten. So the longer they are, the longer we live. So things that cause them to shorten are trans fats, too much sugar, stress, uh, your, uh, your area that you live in. Like if we had a lot of smog, which we don't have here, that's important. You know, if you're breathing a lot of chemicals, um, chronological age risk factors increase over time. So we're, we're more likely to get sick or get disease as we age. Uh, oxidative stress, that's oxidants damaged our DNA and our proteins. And then the, the, the fats are also damaged. So those can become cancerous or cause degenerative uh, effects in our eyes and other organs. And then glycation, the glucose sugar binds to and inhibits the DNA and the, pro the DNA proteins and lipids. So just remember, we need proteins and fats. We don't need carbohydrates. And remember, my saying is it's not the fat that makes you fat. It's the sugar that makes you fat. So anti-aging versus healthy aging. I like to use the term either healthy aging or longevity. And we, we have names for all these. We have the terrible twos. We have growing pains. We have quarter life crisis. We have dirty thirties, middle age and over the hill. So we, we have a tendency to name our stages of life. But I think healthy aging or longevity really is a better description of what we, what we do go through when we get in our 50s, 60s, 70s and on. So what is healthy lifestyle in the 21st century? What does that look like? So they've, they, all the research has come to these, these five factors here. And th th these were chosen uh, with studies that have been done with a huge impact on uh, premature death. Diet, exercise, body weight, smoking, and alcohol. So these are all the things I talk about all the time. And I, when I tell you these things, I'm not making it up. I, it's t this is all research. This is the same information that I teach my doctors. I may go into it a little bit deeper, but they need, you know, some of my doctors need this information just like you do. So let's look at that. So, and I've talked about this before and I will continue to talk about it because it is so important. These are the factors that influence our aging and our longevity. Remember we want to age well, which will let us live longer and be more productive. We don't want to live 20 years of chronic disease. So we have intrinsic factors, our genetic factors, what, what we got from mom and dad. 
We have our epigenetic factors, and those are some external things that can be changed and monitored so we can um, factor those in. Uh, diet and lifestyle, that's changeable. Environment, changeable to a point, depends on where you live. If you live in, you know, a smoggy city or a, a city that burns a lot of, you know, uh, uh, chemicals in the air, uh, you know, that we are lucky not to have that, but you could move. So that would be some kind of environment you could change. So if we boil things down, physical activity is three and a half hours every week. That's about 30 minutes a day. That's not a lot. Not smoking. So if you're smoking, please stop. Um, moderate alcohol drinking. Remember last week I said, or on Monday, I said, if you have one drink, you get extreme benefits from a glass of wine. There's Veritol, all the you know uh, polyphenols, all the good stuff in it. That second glass of wine totally negates the first one. So just remember that. And I'm not talking about a 12 ounce pour. So alternative, alternative healthy eating. So, you know, eating more foods that are whole food based, you know, staying away from processed foods and then your body mass index. If I've calculated for most of you over the years, it needs to be between 18 and 24, 24.9. I like to keep it more for 24. And most of you, you know, so you look at your BMI and it's over that. So it puts you, if you're over 30, that's put you in the obese category. So we definitely want to work on that. So these are the five factors that we know that will help to um, keep us living longer and more healthy, healthy aging. So remember all those factors that we just talked about, if you just have one, it lets you, uh, if you don't have any, you don't live as long, but it, every time you add, you take away those risk factors, it adds life onto your your total life from 50 years old. You know, women, we have it a little bit luckier than guys, but we're, don't worry, women, we're catching up to what the life expectancy of men is because we are doing the same things now. So, and I think that understanding that a proportion of the chronic diseases could potentially be uh, prevented by just adopting the, that low risk lifestyle, no smoking, BMI between 18 and 20, a uh, whole food based diet, one glass of wine or beer, one, one, one alcoholic drink, um, and, you know, exercising 30 minutes a day. That's, that's, that's not rocket science. So I keep saying it. So I hope that at one point you, you know, kick that in. Now we talked about being ketogenic last on Monday. Um, I kind of do what I like to call what I do is more like a ketotarian. So I do low fructose fruits like berries, uh, some citrus fruit, I'm doing blueberries right now. Yes, a lot. Um, low starch vegetables, onions, bro uh, bro broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all your green cruciferous. Because remember, the green cruciferous will prevent uh, cancer. And I, I, it's, it's kind of scary to use that C word, but I think that's important that you understand that just eating these foods will pr will give you better life. You know, your, will protect your body. Uh, clean protein and greens, nuts, seeds, tempeh, which is a uh, 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 a pro, uh, plant-based protein substitute, fish, uh, leafy greens, and then your healthy fats, your coconut oil, your cream, your real butter, your avocado, extra virgin olive oil, ghee, and your eggs and your olives. And so I'm not saying you can't have animals, animal protein. I'm just saying try to use a little bit more plant-based protein. The, the research does say that the more plants you eat, the better. So I'm not saying you can't have your animal protein, but may, maybe limit it a little bit so that maybe it's 20% of your diet and not 100% of your diet that day. So these are my rules that I, that I kind of follow on my, my, my ketotarian style of eating. Uh, eat real food, so don't really eat anything out of a package. And we may do some, um, some like flackers or something that's already pre-made, but there's maybe there's less than three or four ingredients in them. Um, I keep my carbs low, so I keep my carbs between 50 and 75 on a day. Um, I do a combination of plant-based and animal protein, more plant-based than animal. And some days I do all plant-based. Uh, I keep my uh, healthy fats high, which is the big mistake most people do when they're trying to um, do a keto style. All my patients that are not successful on a keto style diet is they still get locked in that low fat, no fat mindset that we had from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And we've determined by research that that's incorrect. So make sure you're eating the good fats. It's good for your skin. It's good for your blood vessels. And, and when we eat those healthy fats, it keeps our arteries slick. So nothing sticks to it. It's the trans fats, those, those fats that are made by man that get sticky 
build up in our arteries and, and clog the arteries. So the, the extra virgin olive oil, the avocado keeps the, uh, they're, they're considered high density lipoproteins and they kind of come up in the, in the bloodstream and they keep it squeaky clean and lubricated so nothing can stick. Remember when that builds up in there and a piece of that breaks off, if it goes to your heart, you have a heart attack. If it goes to your brain, you have a stroke. So we don't want either of those. So that's why we encourage the healthy fats. And if you eat, so if I eat a non-starchy vegetable, I always add fat. So if I have broccoli, we roast it, we'll put some um, extra virgin olive oil on it when we roast it. Um, I eat when I'm hungry and then I eat until I'm satisfied. So what happens is you'll find that you don't get as hungry because you are eating foods that are nutrition rich and um, fiber dense. And if you're eating enough good fats, you've got, you're satiated. So you don't get hungry. To me, that's one of the the biggest benefits I see, and I feel like I am well fed and nourished, and I uh, have enough energy to do, you know, the activities that I do in the day. So remember reading labels. So when you're looking at, and we're trying to determine if you are eating foods that are packaged, we want to look closely at those labels. We remember that uh, the gram of fat is uh, nine calories, a uh, gram of carbohydrates is four calories, and a gram of protein is four calories, and that's how they add those up to give you the total calories. So the nice thing to me with, with a keto style diet is I don't really worry about calories. I really worry about the big number right here, this carbohydrate number. So I want to make sure that number stays low. So if I'm having 50 to 75 carbohydrates in a day, whatever I ate in this half a cup, oops, sorry, sorry, whatever I ate in this half a cup, that's, you know, almost all my carbohydrates for the day. Remember broccoli, a head of broccoli, six grams of carbohydrates. An apple, 20 grams of carbohydrates. Now you've got some fiber and stuff in there. Yes, I agree, but it still has the sugar in it and this still will react differently than the broccoli will. So that's the key is to get that sugar down. Even though it's not a spoonful of sugar, it still processes a sugar. And you have to understand that. Protein, processes as sugar. It'll spike your blood sugar up and then it'll come down. If you eat sugar, you know, carbohydrates, it spikes it way up and keeps it up and then drops it down. A fat never raises your blood sugar. Just remember that. So don't be afraid to have the good fats. So just read your labels, be really concerned with the total carbohydrates. And the other thing I would look at is your fat. If you look here, it says 4.95 grams, <clears throat> then it says saturated fat, 2.91 grams, and then it says trans fat, and it says nothing. Well, how does it get these two numbers right here then? You know, this, this number and this number should equal that number. So uh, pay attention to those things when you don't see the numbers on there. So eat real food. An apple doesn't have a label on it. A head of broccoli doesn't have a label on it. So just keep those things in mind. Uh, use some type of a device to monitor. So <clears throat> Marianne and I use an, uh, an aura ring and it's, you know, it's easily, you, know, you wear it. It doesn't have a lot of EMFs. Um, it has a little sensor, a little charging station. I charge it maybe once a week. Uh, I can wear it all the time. I can swim in it. I can wash it, you know, shower in it. I can get it wet. It doesn't matter. I lift weights in it. I do everything in it. But what I do like about this, uh, and, and you have Fitbits and you have watches and things like that. Um, I just don't wear a watch, so I had to find an alternative. Uh, this is a technology out of Finland. And so I use this a lot to monitor my readiness because it monitors readiness and your sleep and your activity. So it tells me what my heart rate is, what my body temperature is and con constantly monitors it. So it lets me know if my temperature spikes, I would know I was sick. They're using this ring um, for the NBA use this ring when they were in their bubble. Uh, medical professionals use this ring that are in the front lines because they can uh, target that they've got a fever at the moment it starts. So they know to pull, you know, to go, they're getting sick to get them away. Um, but it also measures my um, heart rate, my blood pressure, uh, my heart rate variability, and all those things are valuable for me as an athlete because I can see, okay, I'm not recovering after that hard workout, so I need to modify my workout for the next day. But it also monitors my sleep, and that's always a battle for me. So I, I can see that sometimes I sleep well, 
but I'm always restless. So it's my mine is always that almighty, if I can get all, you know, all the blue on there instead of a red. So I, I like this and, and sleep is really important. And that's one of the things too, that we find that really help with longevity is that um, in, in every night when you sleep, your body has a bunch of things it does. Uh, so it, you know, that when it's healing itself, it's improving your memory and producing cancer killing T cells. And all this is done while you sleep. And so that energy and that electrical signal goes in and is measured by the ring to be able to tell you that. So look at something like that. Uh, I'm not selling them. I don't make any money. I'm an, I just, I just find things and um, I, I find things and I like them. Um, I'm, I'm a gimmick girl. So I try everything. And, and when I find something and I, so I've had mine for probably a year and a half and I love it. So, you know, something to look into if you're wearing a Fitbit and diet device that measures that great, you already have what you need. But <clears throat> if you're looking for something different or something unique, check it out. So that also talks about when we talked about keys for longevity was um, intermittent fasting. So when we intermittent fast, <clears throat> it does a couple different things. It enhances our insulin sensitivity. So it supports healthy blood sugar. It fights inflammation. So our inflammation is decreased. It promotes a healthy heart because our cholesterol goes down, our blood pressure goes down and so do our triglycerides. You then have a better cognitive function, so it supports your brain and also helps with weight loss. But the other thing that we talk about when we talk about longevity, there's something we call, we have senescent cells. I don't want to get too deep in that because it can be like, oh, it's too much. But senescent cells are cells that kill us. And so these target those cells and anything that stresses our body in a good way, like intermittent fasting. So if you get hungry and you don't eat, your body then gets stronger and your body then says, oh, we're in a little bit of a, a famine here. I'm going to burn the fat that I have because you're fat adapted because you're eating a keto style diet to use fat for fuel and protect it. So it stresses the body. The body then has to do a response. The same thing with when you eat you know, your keto style and you're decreasing your sugar, that food has a thermodynamic effect that makes our body have to go, oh, I've got this nutrition rich and fiber dense food i've got to really pull um, support in to, to break all that food down which then releases all the antioxidants and all the vitamins and all the nutrients and all the minerals and then the fiber as well so i like to i mean i do it every just about every day it just kind of works with my my day so here's some ways you can do this so there's different styles i mostly do a 16 8 or an 18 6 meaning I do a 16 hour fast and uh, then I eat for eight hours. That doesn't mean I eat for eight hours, but I'll usually have two meals, uh, a, a lunch and a dinner. So I, we eat dinner at 6.30, I won't eat again until 10.30. <clears throat> Some days I do an 18.6. So I do an 18 hour fast with a six hour feed so that you can play around with that. Then there's, uh, you can spontaneously uh, meal skip, but it's, I'll tell you this will work better when you're doing more of a keto style because if you're going to skip a meal and fill it up with sugar, that's not going to work. Then there's a fast for two, uh, fast for two, uh, eat five days and then fast for two days. Uh, there's a warrior diet where you fast all day and just eat one meal. And that's a little bit harder. I think the 16 8 is probably the best. And then there's one where you eat, stop, eat. So you fast for 24 hours once or twice a week. And then you alternate day fasting where you fast every other day. So I find that the most easy thing to do is the 16, eight, or there's a three and 30. So in, in 30 days, do three days of fasting, but I'm fasting for 24 hours is really hard. Now, when I do a 16, eight intermittent fast, I do do what I call a fat fast, meaning I have my tea in the morning with some organic whipping cream. And I start my day with a little bit of fat because I do all my workouts early in the morning. So if you're not, you know, if you're doing your coffee or your tea, use your organic whipping cream in there and use your stevia or your monk fruit, whatever your sugar replacement is. Just no sucralose, no Splenda, no red and pink packet, blue packet or yellow packet. So there are eight healthy habits to longevity. When I put all of the information together, everything that I've read, everything that I've researched and seen. So these are the eight healthy habits for you to really live a great life. Monitor your blood pressure and heart rate. So that's what I do with my ring. Just monitoring it helps you to keep it in check. It's like a tooth with a cavity. 
if you see that you have a little spot on your tooth and you ignore it, at one point you're going to have to pay attention to it. Same thing with your blood, blood pressure. If you're checking it every day and it's in a good range, you're, you're good. But if it spikes up, you're like, okay, why is that? Why is that? Am I stressed? Is there something going on? And so monitor it every day. And you can do that through any app. I mean, if you do a Fitbit, anything like that. I mean, I have an Android. You can do it through Google Fit. Um, you know, your iPhones, all, everything has all the technology already built in. If you have a new phone, if you still have a flip phone, I'm sorry, you don't. So get a new phone. Uh, the, um, the Smithsonian's looking for your phone. Eat more plants. So more plant-based you know, diet is, is well known and well researched to be better for us. Not saying that you can't have animal protein, just limit it. So if you're gonna have you know, red meat, have it once a week or have it once a month. If you have a little bit of chicken, like we had our salad today and we had a little bit of chicken, a little bit of egg on it, and that was our protein. Now, mind you, our salad came from the farm, our eggs came from the farm, and our chicken came from the farm, and our tomatoes came from the farm. The only thing that didn't come from the farm was the olive oil we put on there. Exercise routinely. And when we talk about that hormesis, that, that stressing the body so that it, it has to get stronger, exercising the same way. So when you exercise, you have to do two things. You have to do strength training and you have to do cardiovascular. Cardiovascular is like paying your credit card off. You have to pay it off every month. But strength training is like paying off your house. Once you pay it off, you just maintain. So you have to do both. And when you do those, when you do like your cardiovascular, you have to get out of breath, not for long, but in 50, for 15 minutes in a day, you need to get out of breath. Not all at once, you can do it five minutes at a time. So when you're out for your walk, walk real fast for a minute and then come back to a, down to a normal. Walk real fast for a minute, come back down to a normal pace. We do it on, we do it on the bicycle when I train. We go, we go really hard and then we do a recovery. Go really hard, do a recovery. You can do it on a rowing machine. You can do it on a treadmill. You can do it any place. And then same thing with your weight training. So lift a weight that's a little bit heavier. It's not the eighth rep that's hard. It's the ninth one that's going to make the most work for you. So anytime you stress your body, your body will get stronger. So if you do the same thing all the time, your body, it adapts too quickly. And it, it, it's good. It'll tone you, but it's not going to get you any better. So exercise routinely, that's at least 30 minutes every day. Uh, you know, I tell people to do something every day because I have patients say, oh, yeah, I work out three days a week. But if you miss one of those days, that means five days you haven't worked out and only two days you have. So get that back into your mind. And it doesn't have to be you don't have to go to the gym. You, there's plenty of stuff you can do at home. Uh, you know, I've got exercise. Uh, uh, my trainers here. Uh, I've got, you know, we've got weights here. I, I ride go out and ride my bike. So there's all things you can do. You can go out and walk. That doesn't cost you anything but wearing a pair of shoes oh, and clothes, too. But you know, shoes. So you don't have to even join a gym for that. Um, sleep appropriate hours. Same thing, you know, six to eight hours is the sleep time. But if you're not getting into REM sleep, and if you don't know, that's where those Fitbits and those devices help you to know. I can tell when I've had a good sleep, and I can certainly know when I don't. So that's, you know, my, my constant um, mission is to, to get the best quality sleep I can. And if you're smoking, you better stop. I just, just, you just stop. There's just no good thing about that. Uh, soak up vitamin D. You hear, always hear me talk about Dr. Sunshine. Uh, vitamin D is great for our immu your immune system. It's great for your bones. It's great for your heart. It's great for your brain. It's great for your uh, nerve, nervous system. And we, I, I can't tell you how many functional medicine patients I see that have um, the low uh, vitamin D. And the doctor, if you go to the medical doctor, if you're in the range, the range is 30 to 100. And most people are like at 30.3. That's scraping the bottom of the barrel. You need to be around 60 for optimal health. And you'll feel better. You'll look better. Your bones will be stronger. But at 30, you're like, you're just at the bottom of the barrel. So um, whole food based, you know, vitamin D is what you need to be taking. I can help you with that. Brushing and flossing your teeth. So here's the story. When you brush and floss your teeth, which of course I do, I have a water pick in the shower and I floss at night, but that gets the bacteria off. That bacteria can damage your microbiome, your intestinal bacteria. Not only does the decay cause problems, but it also causes the, the 
uh, free radicals to overgrow, the bacteria overgrows. Remember your gut health is your immune system. So your large intestine is where your immune system is. Your large intestine is where your, um, your brain factors are made. So 95% are made there for your brain than any place else. Only 5% is made in your brain. So keep that in mind. And limiting your alcohol and sugar. I'm not saying you can't have it. You know, we talked about six teaspoons for females and nine teaspoons of sugar for males. And then your alcohol. One drink is great. There's a benefit. Second drink totally negates the first one. So be mindful of that. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you choices. So this is what I kind of put together. So I went through all the stuff that I take. And I, I wanted to narrow it down to what I think is like the, what I call my fab five for longevity. So here's what they are. And I use standard process and MediHerb because standard process is organic. It's whole food based. MediHerb comes out of Australia and they have the most strictest policy for pharmaceuticals uh, and the med medical herbs have to follow that as well. So I put together this with a little bit of both. So Ligaplex 2. So Ligaplex 2, uh, a lot of you may be on it. I use it for my athletes. I use it, you know, for just long-term repair and, and, and maintenance. But it's for bone strength, tendon strength, ligament strength, muscle support, and it has a built-in multivitamin, Catalan. So it's like the best bang for your buck. So that's one thing. Number two, cod liver oil. Anybody over 50 should be taking cod liver oil. If you're under 50, you can get away with taking, you know, like a tuna oil, calamari oil, something like that, a good quality oil. But cod liver oil is high in omega-3 fatty acids. It's high in vitamin, naturally found vitamin A and vitamin D. And it's got the liver from the cod. So you're getting all the benefits of the liver because I know most of you aren't putting liver on your food logs when I see them. <clears throat> and the third one is Cataplex D, and that's the whole food-based vitamin D. Research says it can't be uh, a pill. It can't be D3 or D2. That's only part of the vitamin D, whole food-based. And that's what um, Standard Process does so well is making those whole food-based products. So Cataplex D is great for immune system, brain, nervous system. And I mean, if I have a patient that is on like that 30 margin where they should be at 60, I can put them on four cataplex D. Two months later, we can run their blood. I'll have them up at 60 and 70 in no time. And then we can just maintain. Once we get them up there, it's just maintenance. Getting out in the sunshine helps to do that. We have vitamin D, but we're so depleted because we eat so crappily that we don't have enough in our system. Once we have a good store of it, then our body can make it by getting out in the sun. The sun can convert it. Number four, OPC Synergy. So OPC Synergy is a strong antioxidant. It supports cardiovascular and brain function, restores collagen and strength and elasticity in tissue, and it's very, very, very neuroprotective. So this is one that I, uh, these are all that I incorporate. I do more, but I kind of wanted to narrow it down because you, nobody ever wants to do what I want to do. So I narrowed it down. So OPC Synergy is amazing. Vitanox. Now, Vitanox is a herb. Um, it's a it's one of the best antioxidants because as we age, those free radicals are very um, enlightened. We have tissue growth; those senescent cells are expanding, or you know, we want to we want to decrease them. So the Vitanox acts as an antioxidant, it acts as an anti-inflammatory. It prevents and treats um, uh, numerous degenerative conditions associated with aging, aging like macular degeneration sorry, macular degeneration, cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, any age um, a cancer. I mean, that, that's why this is uh, fantastic. It also has NRF2, uh, BDNF, which is a, a brain a neurofactor. Um, uh, NRF2 is another uh, uh, neuro, um, cell protective, protects the mitochondria in our body to let us age well. So that's kind of like what I put together that I think works the best for a longevity factor. So I have to talk about blueberries because I have to talk about blueberries. So uh, I know some of you got your blueberries uh, on Monday. The truck will be back on May 3rd. But the specific kind of blueberries he has are the or, or there are Southern Highbush blueberries. And it's not technically a vaccine, but it's well known to be a, an immune system booster. So the farm, you can go out and pick them up. You can go on the website and say, I want to pick them up. You, you buy them ahead of time. They have a great, you drive through. It's gorgeous. They have wildflowers growing. I mean, you just feel good to be out there. They have 
predator noises out. It's just, it's just fantastic. Um, the people are so nice. So the blueberries, I kid you not, are as big as my thumb. I mean, they are some of the biggest blueberries this year, even better than last year. They're, so they're real, they're fresh, they're organic, and they're, they come right to you. So the big blue truck will be at the Winter Park office again on May 3rd from 3.30 to 4.30. You order online and you can pick it up in Winter Park. But if you want to go to the farm, I highly recommend it. I think from 9 to 1 is when they have their pickup times. Um, I'll, I'll give you the, I think I've given you the, um, the web address for that, but I'll do it again just so you have, if you want to have the chance to do that. I'll also give you the Noble Roots Farm. Be a great experience. They're there till kind of mid-May, but they harvest every morning and it's, it's a no frills kind of place, but I mean, it's delicious. And, you know, we look forward to just going out there and, and being out there amongst everybody. So blueberries, and the reason why I'm so high on blueberries too, is one, they're low in glycemic index. So they're low sugar, tons of fiber in the, in the, the, not only the seeds, but the skin, they have a flavonoid called anthocyanin and it's a, the biggest antioxidant property that can boost your immune system. They also act on the respiratory system. So it gives you a good immune, uh, respiratory immune defense. Um, if they found that people who ate rich food, foods, rich in flavonoids and also polyphenols, um, are less likely to get upper respiratory uh, infections, common colds than those that did not. They help your heart health, bone strength, skin health, decrease blood pressure, help to manage diabetes, cancer preventative, and mental health. So they protect your brain, neuroprotective. So one cup of blueberries provides 24% of a person's recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. So that's pretty good. And I've eaten more of my vitamin C than I need. So this is my one of my favorite ways to eat organic blueberries. Put the fresh blueberries in a bowl, some organic whipping cream over top, maybe just a hint of a, a sprinkle of some monk fruit. It's golden. And we already have our frozen ones, so we do the same thing with frozen. You pour the organic whipping cream over it and it kind of freezes like a shell. Same thing, it's delish. So give them a try. Once again, I don't make anything on these. I just find products that I think are amazing. And I just want to pass it on to you because if I think they're good, I want you to have the same opportunity. And when I use my whipping cream, it's always organic. Organic Valley is usually what we use. I don't use Horizon because it has a couple grams of carbohydrates in it. So uh, the organic whipping cream, the Organic Valley has, has no carbohydrates in it. So if you're counting carbohydrates, one or two can make a difference. So post-program, you know, you worked hard, you've taken your supplements. So if you're going to add some grains back in, carefully do so. If you are, try not to. Instead of doing quinoa, maybe do some uh, uh, riced cauliflower instead. Uh, we do that a lot. We'll do a stir fry with riced cauliflower, and it's very satisfying. Um, try the palmini. The, that's the uh, artichoke heart. Um, they make them into noodles, uh, either fettuccine, angel hair pasta, and lasagna noodles. So it works great. You know, make sure you drain the water, heat them up, drain the water off, add your sauce, let it soak in. Amazing. So it'll give you another um, idea. And there's, there's, it's a low carbohydrate food. So adding your fruits back in, of course, you can add blueberries in. Um, you can put them in your shakes or eat them as a snack. Just be mindful that it still has sugar in it. Um, and then you can add some of your cheeses back in and a little bit of honey and that kind of stuff and yogurt. But I'll, I'll tell you that I, I find that a lot of the cheeses and stuff, I just, I, it, puts, it just doesn't react well with my body. So if you're going to do them, do them organic and, and just be, be mindful of them. I do, them the, I do it in little bits, like maybe fresh grated uh, Parmesan cheese. Um, I used to do a lot of brie, but I kind of backed off on that because it didn't make me feel as well. When I would cut it out and add it back in, I could tell the difference. And you know, using an organic is gonna be your better choice. So remember, use your good fats, stay away from canola oil or vegetable oil. If you have any of those oils in your house, get rid of them. Give them to somebody you don't like or pour them out as a weed killer. I don't, I don't care, just don't eat them. Uh, so get rid of those, you know, avocado oil, all your nut oils, make sure they're expeller pressed and organic. That's the key things. So if they're hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated, because there's coconut, there's Luann's coconut oil at Publix but it's hydrogenated. So you don't want that. So we're going to make sure you read the label because Lou Anne's is not very expensive, but the real coconut oil that's expeller pressed and organic is a little bit more expensive. Um, sleep tips, you know, so prayer meditation, a, you know, eat clean diet, you know, early morning sunlight is always good. Um, you write in a journal for your day, you know, work, don't work before you, where you sleep. Uh, we don't have a TV in the bedroom, uh, no devices about an hour and a half before you go to bed. Um, 
sound therapy, we have a big fan in the room. So it's, you know, some, some noise, we can't hear anything to, you know, sleep better. And then you can supplement. So um, Mintran is working well for me. I've started, you know, incorporating that. I do like four at dinner and then a four, four before I go to bed. Um, Minchex, magnesium, kava forte is, is a, um, my patients that take Xanax, I have them do kava forte to get them off the Xanax. A valerian complex is another one will kind of calm the body. But try to do it as natural as possible. There's things that you can do. Remember your exercise, strength training, and cardio, and throw a little flexibility in there. I always do, do flexibility stretching when I go to the gym. Uh, your sweeteners, no uh, uh, blue packet, red packet, yellow packet, or pink packet, uh, no processed sugar, uh, small quantities, you know, watch your honey, it still has carbohydrates in it, but, you know, if you can get honey, get it from a local place, don't buy it at Publix from, that's just sugar water, it's, it's honey with water added to it from China, so don't do that. Go to your local like a farmer's market, or if you have a local um, health, health um, store, they usually will have the local honey. That's also helpful because the local honey is pollinated by local bees. So if you have any allergies, it'll help with that. Um, maple syrup at Noble Farms, they have a maple syrup farm up north. So we have real maple syrup and it's, it's it, the taste is, it's amazingly different. Uh, so monk fruit, um, stevia, and your sugar alcohols. Just be careful with sugar alcohols. They can cause some stomach upset. So, you know, if you don't have, if you're not worried about longevity, I recommend um, multi, which is Catalan, trace mineral, B12, and a fish oil. Those are your minimum. If you're having some blood sugar issues, you're having cravings, gymnema will help. If you're still having some inflammation, you can take either Boswellia or turmeric forte. I would lean more toward turmeric forte. Uh, and then Livapux. If you're having some liver issues, if you're carrying a big um, you know, discount double check up here, then you know, liver support may be needed. But if you, don't, if you don't know and you have a question, ask me. So let's just talk about sugar for a minute because we got the summer coming up and, you know, we have, uh, wait a minute. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, my, my slides got messed up. Sorry. Anyway, sugar time for the kids. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're loaded with sugar, so we want to be mindful of those. Uh, and then our sugar time, our sugar, summertime sugar for the big kids. Uh, we have all those fancy drinks and, you know, margaritas and things like that. So they still have sugar in them. So be mindful of that. So, you know, I do this with all my, your exercise. I figure out how many calories are in it. And then we have to figure out how much exercise you need to do to burn that off. So if you're not willing to walk four hours, or do an hour or 20 minutes of running or 15 to 20 minutes of metabolic training or 61 minutes of burpees to drink that whole pitcher of margaritas, then don't drink the whole pitcher of margaritas. So remember one is better, two negates. So, you know, just watch your hundred calories. This is how you put weight on. If you eat more than a hundred calories, uh, more than you need every day of the year, you'll put on 10 pounds. So be mindful that the third of the burger, this is what 100 calories looks like when we look at our summertime foods coming up. So watch out for this guy. He wants you to celebrate his birthday. So be mindful of these are all foods that um, have 100 calories in them. So you pick. You can have half a piece of s'more or you can have a whole pound of grilled asparagus. So there's your thought. So We'll do another class in July. I like to do it after the 4th of July because of the big guy's birthday there. And I know what you guys do. And that seems to be a common time for everybody just to, you know, pig out. I've got you ready for the summer. Don't ruin it. So we'll do a summer cleanup in July. We'll also do another program in October, just a 10 day. And then January, we do our 21 day. So we'll be ready for that. So remember, health is a journey, not a destination. So I will see you in July.